Hello everybody, here we are with a number of Giraffa Camelo Lepardalis Tipple Skirchi, the uh, Maasai Giraffe. Aren't they lovely? Especially in this landscape. Now, just in case you're wondering while you watch these great beasts wandering gently across the plains, we are an hour ahead of South Africa, which means that it is now, I don't know, it must be, what, 8 o'clock in the morning here? Half past 8 in the morning here. And half past 7 there in South Africa. And so that's, I mean, we're a little bit further east than South Africa, or quite a lot further east, which is probably why it looks a lot brighter here than it does over there. Just, it's not that the morning is uh, necessarily that much brighter, you see. Now, the reason I'm not saying very much is that, of course, it's checking the tipple skirchies in my book. Uh, now, Shelley, of course, you have um, well succeeded where I have failed in many respects. You've said... The yay World Giraffe Day. It is indeed World Giraffe Day. That is absolutely correct. And uh, therefore we should pay tribute to what I think is probably one of Africa's most iconic creatures. And certainly it used to astound me when, you know, I've told you the story a few times when people used to come out and get on the back of the Land Rover and I'd say, well, what would you like to see? Well, strictly speaking, I would sit down at tea with them and introduce myself and then say, after having cut them a delightful piece of orange cake and poured them their coffee just the way they liked it, and then you say, well, what would you like to see? And they say, we're here to see the big five, and because that's what some relatively imbecilic agent has told them that they have to see, when the big five, of course, excludes this completely astounding animal and so I used to say to them well, don't you want to see giraffe and they'd stare at me as though I'd stiff, stepped from the proverbial Swiss cheese and say of course we want to see giraffe and then you would have to explain that they are not part of the big five uh, which of course makes the big five that much more inane now I think this giraffe has got amorous intentions. Yes, indeed he does. It's exhibiting the Fleming grimace. He has been sniffing the urine of the cow in front of him, and he is now perking up substantially. Now, we have watched the deeply, deeply slow and what only looks like profoundly painful process of the southern giraffe trying to mate in the Sabi sand. As far as I'm aware, we have yet to see a tipple skirchie engage in the same activity of making more tipple skirchies, and uh, perhaps this is to be a first. They both seem to be staring rather gormlessly towards us. Of course, there could be a pride of lions just behind us, but there isn't. And Barbara, you say you love giraffe. Well, Barbara, I love giraffe too. I think they're fantastic things, and I think we're very lucky to be looking at them. Especially this version of them. Now, I, I mean, I don't, they are not that much or that obviously different from the southern giraffe. Their patterning is slightly less regular. Each patch is slightly less regular than the patches on the southern giraffe. And it's only when you see the reticulated giraffe a little further north in Kenya, I mean, that you notice a really big difference. But to all intents and purposes, they are the same animal. They are a different subspecies, but that doesn't mean that they're genetically very dissimilar at all. And interestingly, they're browsing on very low-hanging shrubs, the identification of which, I'm afraid, at this stage escapes me. Hello, Shyana, you're just six years old, 
and you've obviously got very good eyes. You say, why do they have those bumps on their heads? Well, I think you're talking about their horns, or what we might call their ossicones. Or if you watch Byron this afternoon, he might refer to them as the ossicles, which of course is incorrect, and I like to tease Byron about that. But the ossicones are those bumps or horns that you can see on the top of the head there, and for the males, they're used for fighting. They're used to bash each other. And they bash each other because they fight over the ladies, over the females. But that's why we think they have those horns. Now what's slightly strange about that, Cheyenne and uh, everyone else, is that, of course, in most of the animals where male and female have horns, they are used as defense against predators. And in those species where only the males have horns, well, often they're largely used for just fighting each other during the breeding or mating seasons. Now, in giraffe, of course, the males do not use their horns to defend themselves against predators at all because they are much too tall to be effective against something like a lion. They kick quite viciously against lions. And so why the females should have horns well, I think that's another matter entirely. I don't really know why. In fact, I've never given it a moment's thought until right now. I shall have to give it more thought and hope that you will all do the same for me. Victor, you're wondering about alarm calls and whether or not giraffe have them. Um, they do, actually. You know, they're a little bit more difficult to define than many of the alarm calls you'd hear from something like, say, a kudu or a nyala or a uh, waterbuck or a, I'm trying to think of a species here, a reedbuck, which whistles, actually, in alarm. But they, they can make a snort. I've heard them snort. I've also heard them make a loud groaning noise in alarm. So they will do both. But also, of course, we know that they communicate infrasonically, and it's quite possible that they do that when they're alarmed as well, not just when they are having a chat, a good old chin wag about the balloons that have just flown over their heads, and whether or not the pilot nearly clipped them on the top of their ossicones as he flew by. Now, Tristan...